All right, guys, I'm super excited to have Elle Russ back on the podcast today talking about her latest book, Confident as F. <laughs> Confident AF. We've got an asterisk in there, but you guys know, you guys know. And, and Elle is the living embodiment of confidence. So I'm super excited to have her come talk to you guys about this today, about confidence and what it really takes and what it really means for our lives to show up in confidence. So Elle, you're a published author, speaker, educator in the paleo world. You've been all over talking. And I will say that is one thing that I noticed about you right off the bat. That's probably what I liked about you the most. I mean, you can probably speak to this as how people are drawn to confident people. But when you're up on that stage, you are extremely confident. So what led you to down this road going from teaching thyroid to wanting to teach confidence? Well, it's it, I've sort of been always teaching it without knowing it to some degree. Right. So, for example, throughout my life, what I found, and this is often what happens, is you find a theme of, you know, what people people who are coming to and what they got. Mm -hmm. And I noticed that everyone was coming to me to gain confidence about something. They either needed to go stand up and ask for the raise they finally deserved. They needed to go stand up to that bully. They needed to go declare their worth somehow. Get they always were coming to me for a pep talk on confidence. Right. Now, that sounds great. And it sounds like, oh, I'm standing on the Oracle at Delphi and everyone's coming to me for advice. <laughs> but at the end of the day, I learned a lot from them because less confident people have a lot of qualities that really highly confident people need to learn too. So mm -hmm. when I say confident is F, people are like, well, I'm already confident. Do I need your book? I'm like, yeah, because you've got some barnacle scraping to do off of your life. you got to refine some of the stuff. So for example, highly confident people like us who are alphas, most of them are, are we're pretty sure in our opinions, so we often are very quick to respond. That's not always a good quality. Less confident people are often more diplomatic, whether it's because they're afraid of speaking up or not, they're often more dip diplomatic. We can learn from that. They're better receivers. They are better receivers. We're not good receivers. We deflect compl uh, compliments. We don't, well, uh, give it to me, I'll do it, because we, we're bad delegators. So these are things like, you know, I realized that it was symbiotic. I, I learned what, what I could teach then, I needed to to get from them. The other big one is that they are often more willing to be vulnerable and co highly confident alpha people do not like vulnerability because we see it as a sign of weakness. We don't want to look weak. I don't want you to see me cry. So for years, like I was like, Oh no, stonewall. No one's ever going to catch me. <laughs> and, and, but you know what? That's not, that's not reality. That's not what it, it, it is to be a human being. And also I argue the most confident is that people are okay with vulnerability because that is the ultimate, not giving a crap about what other people think of you. True. Now, just to start, people are like, well, what is confidence? Because so many people have like misinterpretations of this where they feel uh, offended by the word confident because they think it's like uh, braggadocious out there or very extroverted people like you and me. That's not necessarily confidence. Uh, there's plenty of people that can speak on a stage of 50,000 people, but they get off that stage and they cannot talk to their neighbor or their loved one or ask for a raise. That's not confidence. That's not confidence. And often those times, those people are the most insecure. Sometimes the most secure, confident person in that room is the quietest person in the room who you think might be shy. Well, guess what? They're standing in the corner alone at that party, totally cool in themselves, observing everybody, totally fine. That's confidence. So you can have outward confidence, performance confidence, and you can also have inward confidence and not be, for example, you just maybe you're just a great friend that everybody loves and you have high self-esteem and self-worth because of that. That's okay, but you're going to need confidence whether you're a stay-at-home mom or you're an entrepreneur because even the stay-at-home mom, you, look, I'm sure you have four kids. Have you not had to maybe deal with an awkward moment with someone else's parent? It's going to happen. You're yeah. going to have to speak up in some capacity. Maybe you need to speak up to the school, the teacher, whatever it is. You're going to need it because you don't get anything in this life unless you speak up and demand, declare, and all these other things. Now, there's misuses of confidence. You know, you can use it to dominate. You can use it to, okay. And those are all not going to go well, usually in the long run. But I think when we really talk about confidence, it's it's important for people to know that this is not an anchored characteristic within you. It's the sum of the thoughts you think and the actions you take. And those are fixable. You can be mm -hmm. ground zero shy and do a 180. I've seen it. You might need to hire a social coach to take you to a mall to talk to people, but you can get there. It's mm -hmm. totally worthwhile. So it, it, this is attainable for everybody. You know what I mean? And that's the thing mm -hmm. is that everyone wants more of it. I've not met one person that doesn't want more confidence. I just yeah. I haven't. I love this talk of that you can have extrovert, extroverted people 
who are not confident and you can have introverted people who are not confident. So what do you think is at the core of a lack of confidence? Um, there's so many things, but I think it is, uh, well, what I would say is that confidence is really this ultimate feeling that you're going to prevail. If we could just put a blanket over it. And so sometimes you have to generate the beliefs that get to that feeling, but that's really what it is. Like you're going to prevail. You know what I mean? Now, um, you can be confident in an ability and still not confident on the inside. And I, I, that's what I'm arguing inside and out confident as F. So you could be, uh, give a great example in my book. There's a guy, he's a really good looking guy. He has no issues with his, he works out. He's got a great body. He knows he's good looking. He's confident. He also is a uh, anesthesiologist sticks needles into people's necks for surgery. Totally confident. Can't not be confident there. People are going to die. Totally confident. He's a spear fisherman totally confident you got to go out there five miles in the ocean you're wrangling 150 pound sea creature it's like a 3,000 calorie per minute kind of activity like that's crazy it takes a lot of confidence but this guy can't have a conversation with his neighbor and he can't talk to the person he's dating about anything important he's a people pleaser so you can still be a people pleaser and yet be confident in an ability. And again, that's what people need to look out for too. So when you're judging someone else's confidence, don't judge it by this outward package. Don't judge it by the speech you just saw or the guy out there, oh, he's wrangling, he's spearfish, bro. You must be so calm. There's a lot of confidence kind of shells that people are walking around in. The true thing is really like what's on the inside and how are they projecting that? I do look, we've got a lot of reasons why we're not confident. We're all born confident, first of all, I'd like to say. So that's just like a birthright. You you know, you have four kids. They were like, no, yeah, like they just demand stuff. And then life happens. Shame happens. Things are projected onto people. Maybe a teacher says you're stupid. Okay. So what I argue in this book is it's instead of um, tidy to-do lists and acronyms, and there's nothing wrong with that, but I really wanted to write a self-help and empowerment book that gave specific examples that are real and tangible things that you could go, all right, I've been there. I know. I got it. Check myself. And that's kind of what it is. So it starts off with going through like parental garbage. We've all got something. We all have something. And I, I think the best example of something so dumb and small that can really affect your life is the story about Brandon. And Brandon was a, uh, well, is, he's still alive. Uh, Brandon uh, is in his 40s. And for like a decade or two, always had issues as work as a consultant. No matter what project he was on, something would go wrong he would get blamed for it and then patronized in front of everybody. Totally embarrassing. And Brandon would never speak up. And this kept happening. And I'm like, why are you always wrong? Like, why are things going wrong that you're not getting blamed for? It doesn't happen to me, Joe, Jack, Jim. Like, what is it? It took two seconds of asking a few questions about childhood for Brandon to reveal that his father, great household, no one was molested or beaten, everyone had food, you know, middle class, like seemingly okay. But the dad was like a little bit of a hothead where the hammer would go missing and his dad would go blame Brandon for it and accuse him of stealing it. Brandon would be like, I didn't steal the hammer. And his dad would run around and then his dad would find the hammer and never apologize for it. And this kind of always happened. So I'm like, well, no wonder you continually replay and attract the story of being wrong in a position with authority figures because of this dumb thing that used to happen continually. So we unpacked that. And then the next move was, all right, Brandon, next time this guy yells at you and something goes wrong on the job, what are you going to do about it? Now, this took a little mustering. It's not never comfortable to speak up for the first time. Sometimes nope. it's not even for me. I do it anyway. But it's... It, it can be awkward. You're charged up. There's some emotion there. It's not necessarily fun, but the aftermath is because the the joy and the the, the self-confidence and self-esteem you get. So Brandon's plan was, okay, I know I might get fired if I speak up. So I'm going to make sure I'm financially okay to lose this job in case I need to quit or walk out. Then the second was, okay, what am I going to say when he blows up in front of everybody and blames me for something? So it was something to the effect of the next time that guy was going to do it, he was going to say, hey, Unless you're going to speak to me in a professional tone, I'm walking out of this job right now. And what happened is exactly that. Came around, something went wrong, wasn't Brandon's fault. He gets blamed, chastised in front of everyone. Finally, Brandon speaks up. And what happened was, is what usually happens when you bully a bully, when you call a bully on their shit. They usually acquiesce, they're stunned, they don't know what to do. And they're embarrassed because now it's in front of everybody. You just turn the tables on them. And they're usually like, oh, and he did. He was like, oh, my God, I'm sorry. And he didn't treat Brandon like that again. But then Brandon started to get other contracts with other people. 
and it was beautiful. I wish I could bottle his confidence after he came back, after speaking up. It was like a newfound person. And then he started to attract jobs where nothing went wrong. Now, I always say this. If you've got a theme of something, like that, like Brandon had, and you overcome it, you're going to get a tester. You're not totally done with it. The universe is probably going to throw you a tester. Brandon got thrown one more tester and called me right after that tester because he's like, oh, you would have loved this. You should have seen. I spoke up. I And I wish I could bottle that confidence because it's boundary drawing. It's saying I am not going to be disrespected. It's really sticking up for yourself. Now, if your life's in danger, no, I'd rather have my ego punch than my face it's not about speaking up all the time and always speaking the truth, right? Competent people choose their battles wisely. And also, sometimes it's important to lie. If your mother's wearing an ugly sweater and says, don't you think this is cute? I'm going to say yes. Let's give her that. Okay? Like, of course. So aside from that, so we, parental garbage. Everybody's got one of those. And what is it about your story out there that you have? Because it so dumb, right? Seems like such a stupid thing with the hammer. And then maybe another time it was with a bottle of, you know, suntan lotion, whatever it was, yet that created a story of him being wrong and being okay with being patronized and expecting that. And by the way, just because I was a little bit of a bully as a kid, I can kind of tell you this. We will seek missile, seek heating missile out these people. Do you want to be a target? No. That's another reason why you got to get confident. Once you get confident and you're in this space, people don't mess with you. People don't patronize you. You almost never get, I never, it's, it's so rare. In the past five years, there's been three different times where some mean girl tried to bully me out of nowhere and it was at my gym in the steamer sauna. Literally, don't know why, that's the location. <laughs> and by the way, they regretted it horribly because they chose the wrong person to try to bully that day. And they won't even, they can't even look at me. Like they can't, they are just mortified. Um, and yeah, good, good, you should be. Don't come at people like that. Um, so once you have this level of confidence, it doesn't get challenged very often once you arise to it. But if you have something along the way and you've overcome it, you might get a tester. So we got parental garbage and I can start stop there. Maybe you want to say something about that because then we move on to like downers and some other stuff. So, mm, yeah, well, I just want to say, I love what you're identifying basically about this inner child stuff, which I think most people have, you know, heard about doing work with your inner child. And one of the most powerful questions that Catherine Dixon, my coach asked me when we do the work of Byron Katie is when was the first time you remember feeling like that? When was the very first time in your life you ever remember feeling? feeling like that. And that's become a standard for me now, right? That's such a powerful question. And that's what you asked Brandon there is like, wait, 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 what? Let's back it way up to the inner child. When did, when did you first feel like that? And that's how he was able to identify that with his dad, which is beautiful coaching. And what, what he did was adult Brandon showed up for little kid, Brandon, finally. Yes. No, I get you bumps. Yes. Yes. And so we do this for ourselves. Like all that's all that, what you wanted, you wanted somebody to be there for you and show up for you and give it to you. you give that to you. Now you give that to inner child you. And that's what I'm hearing from that, which is so freaking powerful. And that confidence goes up because you are like this little kid inside that knows that you've got this big adult version. That's going to watch out for you and take care of you and protect you and make good choices for you. So that's freaking beautiful. I love that story. And speaking of Catherine Dixon. So, you know, one of the uh, tenants of Byron Katie that I, I, I mentioned, over and over again, I even kind of talk briefly about it in my book, is <sighs> parent yourself. So Byron Katie, for people that don't know, was this like druggy, drunken, terrible person, just a total mess, uh, terrible mother, self-admittedly, terrible parent. And she had this awakening, uh, you know, in a halfway house, like sleeping on the floor. And after this awakening, she became this like, obviously like spiritual, open, loving kind of person, totally different. And so she writes about in one of her books where her daughter's like, oh, so, okay. Yeah. So you're going to just going to erase all those years of BS. You've been a terrible mother and now you're some spiritual, whatever. Like, are you kidding me? Like what a horrible. And Byron Katie said to her, mother yourself, how harsh to hear from your own mother. But you know what? It's true. It's true. When you're at a certain age, you can sit there and I talk about this in the book, victim. Hey, listen, your victim application has been denied. Okay. It's, it's denied. Yes. Um, and that story is of a woman that I, I, I met at a gathering and she was 50 years old and she was embarrassed about her, her life, her life. You could just tell she was embarrassed about where she was. Everyone else around her at the thing was kind of successful. And so she's, you could tell it was sad to watch, but she was trying to be like, you know, and she was blaming it on her mom. If my mother had just pushed me harder and disciplined me more, maybe I'd be somewhere by now, blah, blah, blah. And so I said, okay, cool. 
what age were you when you actually realized, oh, you know what? My mom kind of sucked. She goes, oh, I don't know. Maybe I was 30. And I said, well, so you've had 20 freaking years. You've had 20 freaking years of knowing that, yet you're still allowing that victim mindset. You and I have talked about this on podcasts. You're still allowing that. What a sad state of affairs. Boy, they won. They won. You just let them win. Yeah, let's talk about this because I love this. Uh, your victim application has been denied. So this, I mean, is there anything more corrosive than being a victim to your self-confidence? I mean, how how can you operate out of that place? So what have you what do you say about victim, the victim mindset in regards to confidence? Well, you know, some people might go, hey, Elle, I didn't, uh, you know, I didn't ask to get mugged on the subway last week. Like, I, look, there are true victims of things. Yeah, but I would just say, well, if you keep getting mugged on the subway. All right. I got to look at you keep running into the same problem. And a lot of these things are the keep running into the same thing we're talking about. Those are usually the areas where we're continually remaining a victim. It's yeah, the, there's a difference between being victimized and being a victim, being right? staying in a victim mindset. You know, it's sometimes like it's good for us to be around people who have been through similar things as us. And they're not in a victim mindset about it at all to kind of like snap you out of your paradigm. Because, you know, yeah. I hear these things, too. We all hear things like, oh, if my dad had just played sports with me more, I probably would have gone to the NBA. Or, you know, if my parents had more money, like, sure, I'd be successful, too. <laughs> we hear yeah. all these things. But um, how do you suggest somebody, where do, where do they start? If they're like, okay, yeah, I can see that. Maybe I am blaming my dad or my mom or somebody else, some abusive boyfriend or whatever. Where do you start? Where do you start in getting out of that? Yeah, well, I mean, again, I think it takes looking at where it's from first, right? And then it takes, who am I hanging out with, too? Like, because, you know, I go on this whole thing about downers in the book. You've been a downer. I've been a downer. We've all been a downer. And we all know what it's like to hang out with downer. we got to stop being downers because it's really chumping in on other people's confidence. Mm -hmm. And it's also a low vibration. And also we got to stop hanging out with them. You know what I mean? Because yep. here's the truth. Every, most people in this world are going to project a lack of confidence onto you in a thing. And what are you going to do about it? Are you going to accept it? Are you going to allow that story to be true? Or are you going to be like, yeah, no, no. Sorry. Now, right. what we can do to prevent that is to remove ourselves from people that we know are constantly constant downers. You keep telling your sister, Mary, about your new, exciting business plan or whatever, and she's a downer every time. Guess what? She's never going to not going to be a downer. She's been a downer for 20 years. You're the insane person. Stop talking to Mary about your dreams. Stop it. Right. Get right. a coach. Get an unbiased person. Get a new tribe of friends on a support group. Join mm -hmm. your circle. What? Do whatever you can do to get with people that are pro you and are going to push you. So again, it's like when we talk about positive mindset, it's very difficult to have some wonderful morning routine or some positive, you know, spiritual practice. And then yet at the same time, be like looking, you know, at murders all day or like, you know, crime reports, <laughs> whatever it is. Right. It's, it's a little. So so you can't you can't move forward with confidence and then keep come keep how many do you want to go up against a brick wall or a speed bump I, I would like to choose the speed bump and so the speed bumps you know are quick and they're easy and you're over them and brick walls is really crash you down and i have i have been on the other side of this people are just going to downer you wherever you go and time i told someone i was a writer the first thing out of their mouth was okay yeah like are you a real writer who makes money at it or are you just like you know you work at starbucks but you write on the side I said, boy, that's rude as fuck. Would you say that to a real estate agent? Would you, I said, would you ask a real estate agent, do you make money selling houses or do you just have your license but live at home? And the guy goes, well, I mean, it's different. I go, no, it's not, dude. No, it's not. But here's the difference is that negative naysayers like you often increase exponentially my success. So thank you very much. You know, and, and people would say, well, you didn't have to respond or why didn't you pull out your book? Because I'm not in a defensive mode there. I'm not going to sit there and prove to him. You're coming at me like that. Now, I'm talking like this and people are like, ooh, this is my other thing I put in my book. I, we are, we are real people living in a real world with real personalities. I am not that, I do not believe that true spirituality is always getting to a place where nothing ever affects you and you're, ch that's not real life. We're not living on a hippie commune. People are going to come at you. People, you got to be prepared. I also believe that this is something that is good to foster within us as primal ancestral beings. This is our nature. This is what it's there for. Mm -hmm. I feel that heady stuff of people saying you need to get to a place where you're, yes, we all want to get to a place where we're less affected by things, of course, but there are contrasts in life stuff's going to happen. And it's not to say that you can't keep a, a space of peace throughout those things, but there are times to say, hey, you know what? No, you're being a dick. Sometimes something like that just needs to happen. 
you know? So mm. I, and those moments, like the moments that I got bullied or, you know, tried to get bullied by these chicks at my gym, I didn't let it go. I went right at them, went right at them in their face and gets to this day, still loving it, still loving it. Every time I think about that experience, I'm like, yeah, good. I'm really glad I did because that fueled and fostered my confidence versus staying silent and accepting it for some yeah. ulterior motive of a false level of spirituality because, well, I, you know, I'm just going to let it go. Are you? Because I bet you that whole day you're like, man, I wish I could have said so. Mm-hmm. Well, then guess what? I have very few regrets in my life at, at this point about, I should have said that. <laughs> I should have. I don't really have a lot of those because I say it. Do you know yeah, what I mean? Adult L showed up for little girl L. <laughs> and little Absolutely. girl L is like, she got me. She's got me. <laughs> and, and you want confident as that friends because then you can have these communications. You know, you talked about one on a podcast, but you had a little thing with a friend. They were like, hey, you felt they were being rude to you. And they had an exchange. Confidence. Yeah. Confidence is what was good about that because nobody went away with resentments and, and having it dig deeper. So it's great to have these type of friends too, because you can just kind of do a mic drop and go, Hey man, you know, you're being a donor right there. That's not cool. And then they're like, Oh, okay, cool. Versus not speaking up, you know, um, also not speaking up can really affect your thyroid and can affect your life. Um, uh, not expressing your creativity. Uh, this is, uh, it never look that choked up feeling you get in the throat. Everyone's had it. It's not good. That is a sign. So if you see and feel yourself, constantly feeling like choked up because you can't speak. Do you know what I mean? Then there's other, uh, and and the thing too is that so confident people, like they're comfortable with their failures and mistakes. Do you know what I mean? They, they're, they speak with authority, of course, as, as I do and you do too, but they encourage and foster and celebrate the success of others. Mm -hmm. You know, so confident people are not jealous or envious because you know what that is. And everyone, we just need to call it what it is. When you are jealous of someone, it's one thing to envy. And we've talked about this. That can be good. It'd be like, oh man, they got a private jet. Ooh, I want that. You know I mean? It could be an igniter to something you Mm -hmm. might want, or you might be like, oh, that's so inspiring. I, if they can do it, I can do it. That that's one thing. I want what you have. Jealousy, uh, that is literally kind of hoping that the person who you're jealous of fails at the thing that you want. It is, it's hoping they fail. So you know what else is hoping you fail? When you come to me and you're like, oh, I'm thinking about starting this new thing. And I just go, uh, all right, be careful. Cause like 50% of new businesses <laughs> fail. Like, you know, I mean, it's just like all of these like hits, we get all these hits from people and we can choose to internalize it and accept it mm-hmm. and go, okay, they're right. But like, you have to really think about that. It's about, it's not about proving themselves, you're proving them wrong. It's about proving yourself awesome. But confident people encourage other people. So when I go, yeah, right. Good luck with that. Like Tara, like if I roll my eyes in my head, even if I don't say it, I'm going, yeah, good luck with that. She'll be, uh, she'll be flying back in no time. Good luck with those Hollywood dreams. Um, guess what? You know, what you're really doing is hoping for someone else's failure. That's really what you're doing. That is so low vibration in your need to be right in that moment. You're really kind of putting a, you're you're hoping for someone else's failure. It's just what it is. That is not a confident pro you type of position to take. It just isn't. Um, And no one wants to hang out with those people. Nobody wants to (laughs) hang out with these people. Yeah. Yeah. Do you feel like, I feel like when I hear that from people, it's, I, I hear a projection of their own self-talk, right? This is how totally. it's, it's reflecting their own lack of confidence. So when it, it's easy for me to deflect those things when I hear that from people, because I literally just look at it as like, a, oh, okay. I see kind of what's holding her back. <laughs> like I see that yeah. she doesn't believe that you can do stuff like that. So it doesn't even affect me. It's kind of like more like noted, um, how can I encourage an environment within her to see that she can also do all of these things. Right. So I think when you, that's a great way to look at it, that's Mm -hmm. the right way to look at it It is like, Oh, (laughs) they just don't understand. They don't get it. You know, of course, we're just being upset about it. On the other end too, we, we do have some level of, you know, you have to protect yourself to some degree, but some other things about confident people. So they, they don't feel the need to prove themselves to anyone. So when you see someone bragging and you know, that's not confidence, that's, that's actually serious insecurity. And Mm -hmm. so I tell this story, it seems really cocky, but I'll clarify it where, uh, I had an esthetician who was doing facials for me and she's wasn't confident. And again, I tracked these people in, wasn't surprised. Like when I sensed her, I'm like, how she was meant to meet me. Like I could just, you know, (laughs) uh, and she said to me one day when she's giving facial, she goes, you know, Oh, I thought about you. She goes, I was at a thing and I walked into this, it was a party or a restaurant 
restaurant or whatever it was. And she goes, every time I walk in somewhere like that, I always feel like self-conscious, like everyone's looking at me like, ah, and I'm feeling so insecure. And she goes, and I thought about you and I thought, I bet Elle doesn't ever feel that way. And she said, how do you feel when you walk into a room? And literally before she could even say the M on room, I said, I walk into every place like I own the mother ever. Every, every, and, and that sounds real cocky and dominating, but I want to clarify that I don't walk into every room, even caring if anyone knows what I do, what my resume is. I don't need to, I don't care. I don't care. Uh, I'm there to just be open. I'm there right. to be like, Hey, I may have a conversation. I may not, I may stand in the corner the whole time and people watch like I'm good with any of it. And right. that's what I want for everyone to go everywhere, feeling comfortable in who they are properly their own skin as well. You and I are big on that, you know, feeling good in your own body and healthy, right. but again, feeling good about who you are in this world. And mm -hmm. back to the parent thing, nobody is going to do this for you. That's the thing. No one's going to do this for you. Nobody. Y you're it for you. That's all you have. And again, back to Byron Katie, she's like, you're it for you. And someone could object and say, well, well, that's not true. I mean, I think about other people. Uh, my friend Joe was in the hospital and I went and brought some flowers. And yeah, because that made you feel because that's how that's all about you still. <laughs> you haven't had a thought that isn't about you. You're it for you. So if you are waiting for other people to instill you with confidence, forget about it. And there's people that again, like have a confident in like a knowledge. They're like, I'm really smart. I know my shit, but they just don't have the confidence to go put it out there. Well, that's no good because now you can't tell your story or possibly help someone or change the world. Right? So you need confidence as well for that, for, for everything. You need it for everything, even a friendship to be able to speak up in a moment of awkwardness because that solves it and it's over. What a, what a speed bump versus turning it into like, you didn't say something, now it's lingering, now the next time you see him, now you're triggered, and now you're bringing up something six months that happened, now it's like, oh, you've been resenting me this whole time, you didn't say anything? Like, that is a cluster for any kind of relationship. It's better to get it out. And, um, you know, confident people, they tell it like it is, they speak the truth, they're the most authentic. This is why it's attractive, because people want it. So, mm -hmm. you know, I, and I do, I know, I, I do know that I have that vibe, you know, I get it, but also I'm a confident public speaker. I've had a lot of training, you know, I mean, I've been on many stages before, so I have no shame about getting on stage that can be learned. Performance confidence can totally be learned completely. You might actually have some nervous poops before the first time speaking. <laughs> it happens with a lot of, we call it pre-show poops, or uh, we use another word because it is going to happen. You have to work through it. But at the end of the day, that's just performance confidence, man. Anyone can get that. I would argue that the inner is more important, that the outer is valuable, but you kind of can't have one without the other. And if you're, if you're not confident in one area of your life, it's going to seep into the others and screw it up. And that's what I learned. So my story, and we don't have to go into it now, but my story about getting disabled, the, the chapter dis shame disables confidence. If you've got shame lingering mm -hmm. around and it doesn't matter where it's at and you know this game, it's going to it's gonna creep in and you think you can shuffle it over here. I really did. I thought, I thought, I so thought I could get away with that. Mm -hmm. And it blew up in my face and I had that one last piece overcoming the shame of that my disability in order for me to become confident as F because I was already confident everywhere else. But this area. Well, every area of our life is important, right? Relationships, money, career, health, right? So yep. that is going to disable you too. It doesn't mean you have to write a chapter about it, but you got to get to it. You know what I mean? So these yep. are all some random, some, some, you know, like random tenants of it. Also, there's a great quote in my book and I want to, I want to throw this out there. Um, mm, it sounds harsh. It's this quote by Andre Debuse. And he says, shyness has a strange element of narcissism. I, the belief that how we look and how we perform is truly important to other people. There is wow. self aggrandizing weirdness to mm. shyness and to this cowering victim mentality. It's a kind of narcissism in a way. It's really wow. like too much all about you. And I, I really appreciate that quote because I think it's something people need to think about. There's really, um, and now the other side of it too is people were taught like, well, don't brag, you know, be, be humble. Right. There is a fine line there because you're not going to go into any job interview. They're going to ask you what your strengths are. Seriously? Like you're, if you can't, like you're going to have to tell people what you're great at. And yep, there yep. should be no shame in that. So sometimes that's just parental garbage or religious garbage um, from the past that needs to be cleaned up. Uh, some parent, I, I have a friend who a parent kept telling them, like, don't don't tell people about your good things 
You know what I mean? And mm-hmm. and again, we know the difference. We all feel it when someone's bragging and trying to prove something or when someone's just stating a fact. Like if someone were to call me and ask me about what my skills are or interview, I'm ready, I'm ready to sell myself. I, I tell you all the stuff right now. I know, I know you could too. That's called self-promotion. Are you a brilliant artist? Who's coming to your door and knocking to buy a painting? You got to get out there. It's all sales. Everything yeah. is sales. Yeah. Yeah. And like, if you can't own your good qualities, like again, going back to that inner child, like that's so rude. Like what so you've got some little kid sitting in front of you and you can't say anything good about that kid. That's the same thing. It's so it, to me, it does. It actually shows that the ego is a little bit too strong. I love that quote that you shared. Cause I've always said that I'm like, you know what, if you have to, if you're so worried about what other people think that you can't even just show up as yourself, that's your freaking ego. It's like the same thing as gym intimidation. When people are afraid to go into the gym, when I, hear that from women every single time I say get over yourself your ego is robbing you of everything that you want oh you're intimidated because you think people are looking at you get over it get it's over kind of yourself narcissistic, isn't it right yes there's, a it element, is. there's an element of narcissism in there and I just like that he pointed that out and it's true what you're saying the gym thing yeah that's yeah class. yeah and it, that's the thing with like you know I think being on social media for me in a way has really helped me heal from this I don't know about you but like you're not gonna look perfect all the time you're not gonna speak perfect all the time. You know, we're doing podcasts. Like I stumble on my words all the time. You're not going to be perfect. And getting over that is one of the most healthy things that I've ever done for myself. Right. Because that's what keeps people from living the life of their dreams is like, everything has to come out perfect. It's all got to be perfect. What are people going to think of me if it's like messed up at all, you know? And it's like the guest house, the only way you can get better at it. There's only one way you got to freaking do it imperfectly and you got to do it again imperfectly and again and again and again. So I love that. I love what you're saying about that shyness quote. That's so good. So good. So good. Like no one, like, um, people don't trust people who have a lack of confidence. That's why con men work, right? Okay. Con men, it's confidence, man. That's what that is. So what they do, they instill a false sense of confidence in you believing there's someone they're not to steal your money. That's how it works. Okay. Now, mm-hmm. <laughs> it's a misuse of confidence, right? And it's not truly confident. You're not going to get away with it. They usually, even if on the inside, they're not going to get away with it. Right. Cause that's going to eat at your soul. But at the end of the day, like, man, you just, um, nothing is going to come to you. And also nothing is going to, let's see, I would just say that your life, the, the the experience you have of other people towards you is going to be way better because people put, people trust confident people. They're authentic. We trust what they say. That's part of the reason why it's very attractive because Mm -hmm. confident people tell it like it is. And people are usually like, ooh, taken aback in awe at that. It's Mm -hmm. really just being authentic, isn't it? And Mm -hmm. I argue here too. You know, I said the other day and I talk about it in my book. So if you've heard about that person, you're like, oh, poor Joe. He's always so nice. Always going to walk. He's too nice. You know, that's his problem. No, no, he's not too nice. He's a liar. He's a people pleaser because Joe's a guy that goes around, doesn't speak up his mind or tells people things they want to hear so that they'll like him because they fear rejection. Now we are entering into a spiral of covert contracts, passive aggressive behavior, and it's all sorts of effery we don't need in our lives. So authenticity reigns supreme in this world, period. It does. So if we were listening to a podcaster and they stumbled on their words and then we're all insecure and weird about it, I guarantee you would be like not listening to their podcast anymore. There's just an immediate like flip that can switch where you're like, I just don't trust. It's right. They're not confident in themselves. You know right. I mean? Yeah. And, yeah. And now I love it. Love- Trump research. Like you can't pretend to be something like you'll be found out. That'll be a little bit of a con man thing, too. So you kind of can't fake it either. You know, um, I mean, you can for a while until uh, are the goods delivered. Oh, nope. You're full of crap. Right. So, of course, you don't want to be falsely confident about things. Confident people are the most hireable. Here's the thing. When I used to hire people for a living in the corporate world, I would rather hire a confident person, and this is true for most employers, than someone who has the skill in the thing. Because confident people are proactive. They're also on time. They're alpha. They are like, go above and beyond. They are not afraid to speak up, give ideas. They don't play small. And you'd rather have an employee like that. They are seemingly confident people are more reliable, whether they truly are or not. That's just how they are perceived. Right. So that is why, and, 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 you know, and I see this in me and like you saw it in me and I get it. And I, I, people are drawn to me for that. But again, on the other side, like I had other stuff to work on too. I was too, I was too confident, not enough real soul, not enough, you know, and one of these things about not being vulnerability, vulnerable. And, um, my, my best friend, Tanya Stewart is a, uh, alpha coach on this. She talks a lot about alphas. And this is like one of the major pitfalls because we, 
we're not accessible. Like you, you and I can't ever get to be really close friends if I'm not sharing stuff about my life that is emotionally based. If I'm not willing to share any sad things with you or any things that are going through my life, how are we ever going to get intimate, right? And then you're over here sharing all your stuff because you're open and vulnerable. Well, that's a one-sided thing. And then what it does is it makes a person like me go, I don't know that I really trust that she likes me because she doesn't know this other part of me, right? What's a distance. Right. And that's what my problem was with my shame of my disability thing. Because I stayed on the outside of friendships and I stayed on the outside of relationships and I didn't have emotional intimacy with those people because that's where I couldn't speak up. That's where I didn't have confidence to own it. That's where I had so much shame and embarrassment. Mm -hmm. And most of it was ego. It was out of peering, right? I right. couldn't own it. It wasn't until I owned it that I totally became free and I struggled with it for literally like two decades. Guys, don't do this get to it now, you know, and that's why I'm out there preaching it. It's like, get to it now so that this stuff doesn't fester. No, what it could have should is, but Hey, you know, I could have developed maybe closer relationships with some people that I really liked that I didn't. Cause I didn't want them to get to know me. Cause I didn't want them to find this thing out about me because I was too, or maybe you're just generally alpha and you just don't want to show emotion. And that's just weird to you. Well, your, your, your friendships and relationships are also going to lack in some way. So that's what like less confident people who some people call betas, and I don't think that's a negative thing. We have a lot to learn from them. They're vulnerable. They, they can receive. They can receive help. They can receive confidence. Alpha's confident people, they don't help. Nope. It's weakness. I'll do it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we, we have to like, you know, highly confident people need to refine it. And then people who aren't confident have to cultivate it. Yeah. Sense. I love what you hit on about like shame basically leading to dishonesty, right? So we hear about people and it's like, oh, they're a liar. Or, oh, they didn't tell me this. Like, I can't believe they didn't tell me that. And it's all based in shame. And this is something yes. that Catherine Dixon helped me define too when I was living a very people pleaser life. Everything you're talking about, I'm like, yeah, that was me. That was me before I started doing my personal work of like, I just wanted people to like me. So I wasn't going to say anything because then they might not like me if I told them what I thought. And when Catherine would go through those sessions with me, she would say, oh, so you were dishonest. And I'm like, Ooh, oh, all of a sudden there's a word on there that I'm like, oh, well, yeah, that. yeah, yeah, I was dishonest. So I think when we can actually, I love that she word, called that out. I love that. That's, yeah, that's she's, really she's, the she's, truth. That's the right. truth. Right. And here I was in this victim story of like, well, they were manipulating me. They were doing this. They were doing, she's like, what well, did you tell them how you felt about that? Well, no. Okay. So you were being dishonest with them. Mm. All right. Yeah. <laughs> That's nope. a tough pill to swallow. And it all comes in, in this, these old patterns that were picked up in childhood of survival for me. Sur for me, people pleasing was a survival mechanism, right? Yep. It was just a coping strategy that I learned. Like if I just do whatever people want, they'll like me and then I'll be safe. Right. Then I'll be, I'll fit into the tribe. So, but like re-examining that as an adult and finding out that you're actually being dishonest. Ooh, then you can, now you can start to take accountability. Now it's like, <laughs> I like to think there was almost a moral thing there for me of like, if I don't speak up, I'm actually, that's actually a moral thing for me. Like I'm not being honest with this person. And it's so true it's because of integrity. it's messed up. What's that? Yeah. It's not out of integrity. Yeah. Yeah. And the vibe instantly, like once you're not being honest completely, the other person is confused or like there's, there's muddled energy, you know? And as soon as you can have the confidence to just say what you're feeling, even though you're scared, then you can have clarity. Then you can come to the same place. But I would ask you like for people that are, have a hard time speaking up for themselves, maybe they're like their, their boss takes advantage of their time all the time, or maybe they don't like bringing up certain things with their spouse because they're afraid their spouse will get pissed off as soon as they bring it up or whatever. What would, what would you say to somebody who has a hard time speaking up for themselves? Mm, to do all of the work I'm talking about to lead up to the point where you're going to finally make the hit, but also how much longer would you like to live like this? When is your rock bottom going to hit? If it's speaking up to a boss about something, look, in those scenarios, hey, if you've got 18 you know, kids to feed and you're the only breadwinner, you might want to tread lightly or work out a better plan or save some money so that if you get fired because you say that or, you know what I mean? Like, Okay, got to be realistic about it. But at the end of the day, um, I would say this to that person. I'd be like, then great. You either speak up and say something to potentially change your situation or you don't get to complain about it ever again. Yep. Because you've been complaining about it for three years now or a year or six. Enough is enough. We have to call ourselves on this shit. Enough is enough.
right? Yeah. It's lingering. I mean, you know, now here's the thing. It's not comfortable to speak up. It's not, it's not going to be comfortable. It's not going to be fun. You might get off the phone and cry your eyes out. That, that might happen. Okay. But that's okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you just need, and that, those are the moments where you have to act as if those are the moments you have to push through. You know, it's not about faking and pontificating confidence, but, and I guarantee once you do it once, I feel so damn good. Yeah, and, and I love if it doesn't go well, you are going to feel good because again, you're out of integrity. You're going after what you want. You're never going to get what you want unless you ask for it. I, I am like, I am a poster child for never hurts to ask. Literally, I am totally the poster child. So go ask, but like, you know what? Because so if you don't ask, then guess where you are? You're back at square one where you, <laughs> where you're hating it. You got no right. choice. You go up or down or quit the job, get a new one and avoid that. But guess what? It's going to come up it's still going to come up. Your next boss is going to come up. It's going to come up somewhere yeah, else because yeah. you have not risen to the challenge of this thing that is hard for you. The universe mm -hmm. loves to give us those. So back to your protective mechanism by being a people pleaser, my protective mechanism growing up in a crazy city with a bunch of gangbangers and guns everywhere. I mean, oh my God, just total mess was probably being way too bully confident, like a little bit. I, I, I wasn't open for vulnerability. I wasn't open for emotional anything or true connection. It was like, I'm watching my back. I'm on the, you know, it was a very like mm -hmm. a defensive type of, uh, protective mechanism. Me. Yeah. It was kind yeah. of a protective mechanism to be, in fact, you know, I remember like being in certain situations, you're walking by an alley, you know, you just have to like, mm, you have to like muster up even like that physical, like I'm going to ready to punch someone. Like right. th that's a weird state to be in like for years and years and years. And it wasn't right. like, you know, to California. Now I live in the mountains, <laughs> like a totally different vibe. But, but where it killed me was, again, not speaking up in relationships. And it was hard. Like, I couldn't even say the word disability or talk about my arms without bawling my eyes out for years. This might be the case for you if you've never spoken up to anyone in a work situation. But you have to. And usually, I mean, it's rare that I've seen where it hasn't worked. Oftentimes, when the person speaks up, it goes easier than they thought it could have gone. Yeah. Yeah. And if absolutely. it doesn't, you get a prize for that because you know my belief there. When you, my belief is that when you do a pro, you move. I don't care what it is. You do a pro, you move, you get a prize. You will get a prize from the universe that will show you you're on the way, girl. That was the right way to go. Keep going. You will get some sort of confirmation that it was the right thing. So, again, she could choose to quit the job to avoid talking to the boss. It's going to happen somewhere else. So if you're afraid of speaking up, it's going to follow you everywhere. Mm -hmm. You are wherever where you go. And you're going to mm -hmm. keep getting challenged until you figure it out. And I get getting challenged on my thing until mm -hmm. I figure it out. Yeah, I love that because I, as somebody who's gone through this, it's always, I'm always practicing at it. I'm still working on it. But the first time you do it, you're going to be nervous. You're going to be Shaky. sweating. You're going to be like probably overly emotionally charged, even though you're trying to act cool. Like you're going to, it's all those feelings of nervousness. It's, it's outside of your comfort zone. Yep. And then the next one's going to come up and you're going to be like, nah, I'll just like, I'll just kind of like ignore it and it will magically go away. Nope. 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 And I love, I actually love what you said so much about complaining. I have to point this out. This is such good advice because when we are complaining, we are acting like we don't have the power to choose to change it. And so complaining, anytime which I start complaining, true, which is a lie, right? right? The person right. who's complaining that thinks they don't have the power to change it. We know that's a lie. And then right. they're also doubly lying. It's like compounded Bullshit. How many, how many highly, okay. So you're, you know, you're close with Mark Sisson, who was highly successful and confident. In health industry. Does he complain to you a lot? Is he a complainer? Almost never. <laughs> yeah. You're right. no. Like I, most, I, I can't, of the highly successful. He's very solution forward. And all the employees that have worked for him in the past or right. currently work for him would say that Mark is, um, he, he is a creative solution person. If like, believe me, along the course of him starting his business over the years, lots of fires have had to be put out, right? Of course. I mean, my gosh, it's right. going to happen with any business. Every right. time there's a conundrum, Mark is like laser focused on, all right, he's not wallowing in it. He, for one second might be like, ah, damn it or whatever. But then it's like, all right, let's work on the solution. He's not a victim. Beautiful. Yeah. Beautiful. Yeah. Anytime I find myself, kids are a slip up area for me, right? Like I'll be like, Oh my gosh, every time I turn around, you're like pulling couch cushions off. This is driving me freaking crazy. Well, okay, now I'm in complaining instead of solutions. So as soon as I love it, being solutions focused has changed my life. As soon to me, I look at complaining as a, a red alert. It's like an alarm that I am not acting in my power. 
complaining. So if you're like, dude, especially if you've got a complaining buddy, you might, you got to freaking cut the cord. You guys have developed a very toxic relationship. If you just sit there and complain with somebody all day, you, both of you are acting out of your power and they're bringing that out in you and you're bringing it out in them. So, so I love that you pointed out complaining. Cause that can be like a red alert to us that we need to re-examine the situation and become like Mark Sisson. <laughs> He's like my hero <laughs> and be more solution, hero. solutions yeah. focused. Love it. Yeah. And you know, you're just, um, again, how's it working out for you? Whoever's out there that's not speaking up because it's not working out for you. Right. And I can say this because I, I can tell you right now, my life is awesome because I'm confident. It's more awesome because I speak up. How much more awesome is your life that you changed and maybe still have to work on some moments you get triggered, but changed from being a people pleaser who didn't speak their truth to someone who does. Hello. It's changed my whole life. A different reality. We live in a different reality. Yeah, it's a, it's, so it's a completely different reality. And also, I want to say, you know, confident people are nice. I have a strong personality. I'm no shit shy town. I'm going to come at you. But but at the end of the day, like I I'm very approachable. I'm really you know I'm I actually I'm like the least easily offended person on planet Earth. But but that but confident people are nice and they help encourage other people because we also know that there's not a lack of abundance. And again, this yep. goes back to the enmity and jealousy. So confident people don't compete. So I love to say when you compete, you lose. And I want to touch on this for a sec, which is. Well, that sounds like, well, well, that's not true, Al. I mean, if Tara were in like a marathon, like clearly there's going to be a loser. There's other people she's competing against. I'm like, yeah, but it'd be way different if you, Tara, walked into that Ironman or whatever and were like, oh, I'm going to beat these bitch. Like, I'm going to take them down. Like, if it were all about the feeling you're going to get from their failure, which is kind of like a competitive thing versus just I'm going to dominate. I'm just going to win. Those two things have very different vibrations. And I often win most things I compete in. And it's because I don't compete with other people. I never compete with other people. I'm just competing to win. People are like, well, but there's other people. Yeah, there are. But it's a mindset. You see the difference? Mm -hmm. my, my, my value and worth has nothing to do with someone else's failure. And that's one side of it. The real side of me just, you know, wanting to win doesn't involve anyone or their, their demise. It just involves in me prevailing. Yeah. When you, when you said that in my mind, I visualized Usain Bolt, right? Like Usain Bolt isn't just barely trying to beat the next guy. He's freaking blasting past him because he is focused hundred percent on his ability. Right. And that's what I'm hearing from you. That's the visual I see is like just smoking exactly. people because you're going to actually limit your ability to perform if all you're doing is try to beat the next person. Right. So when, yeah. Yeah pull a fit. You might have to pull a move in a race where you're running and you're out of breath, but you go and buy the major competitor and you pretend like you're super chill on the way. Like you get, look, <laughs> you know, fake out psych outs. I mean, I remember Brad and Mark talking about a couple of those where like they're running by the guy and then all of a sudden they're like, just, you know, pretend like they're doing great just to like psych out someone. Okay. So there's some of those games in there, yeah. but at the end of the day, this general thing is, um, so for example, like if someone came to me and they're like, I want to start a podcast, I want to be a writer. My first response is like, isn't threatened. Confident people aren't threatened right. by other people's success because we don't know there's not a lack of abundance. Right. You can have your podcast and follow You can have, and if you get more than me, like, I don't care. I'm not counting. Right. When you start <laughs> counting, you've just lost. <laughs> right. You've just lost the confidence game. It's not, you're not, you're not confident. You're insecure. Totally. Totally. I love that. I love that so much. Okay. Oh, uh, where can they, where can they get your book? You can get on Amazon and print and uh, Kindle, and you can go to lross.com and learn more about me there. And of course, we have our podcast every Wednesday, Kick Ass Life Podcast, and then uh, the Primal Blueprint Podcast every Monday. So, yeah, guys, if you haven't heard my first episode with Elle, she is an expert on thyroid. So, if you have any questions on thyroid, go listen to that episode. It's full of knowledge. And on her website, lross.com, she also has a free thyroid guide that's amazing. So, if that kind of stuff interests you, please go check Elle out. She is so good. And it came from your own journey on that stuff. It's so it's full of passion and real information, right? Because she was tired of the BS. Next is Primal Blueprint Podcast. Elle is the host of that. That's Mark Sisson's podcast. It's amazing. So don't, don't, don't miss that. And also, yes, our Kick-Ass Life podcast, you can listen on any of the major podcast platforms. Also watch us on YouTube like this. Just go to Kick-Ass Life, search that in YouTube. Um, and also we have our first event coming up. So we're doing a kick-ass podcast live. So if you go to kickasspodcastlive.com, our first event is July. Oh, wait, sorry, I'll correct you. It's kickasslifepodcastlive.com. That's right. Our main website is just kickasslifepodcast.com. We can see all the channels, but so it's kickass live podcast live live. Thank you This is just for the special 20 person max event we're doing. Yeah. 
Yeah, 20 people. It's an online event. So you get two hours to just ask L and I anything. Um, also find your tribe of like-minded people. So we're very excited to start building a community. So be sure to check us out there. That's going to be on Saturday, July 25th. And um, you can get all the details on that website. And again, L, thank you so much for coming on and ta- speaking about confidence. This is such a great thing for all of us to be thinking about, like what really goes in, goes into confidence instead of just the surfacey stuff. So good. So thank you so much, guys. Make sure you check out her book. It's confident as F asterisk asterisk. C-K. Yeah. <laughs> you just type in the word on Amazon. It'll come up. <laughs> You'll get it. You'll get it. All right. Thanks so much, Elle. Thank you.